As part of Apple's goal of creating a computer with appliance-like simplicity, there was no distinction made between the operating system software and the hardware it ran on. Because of this, early versions of the operating system didn't have specific names, so version numbers of the operating system are based on the Finder and System File versions. Macintosh System Software 1 was introduced alongside the original Macintosh 128K to much applause by Steve Jobs on January 24, 1984. In fact, the round of applause that followed its introduction was one of the longest in recorded history. This initial iteration of the Mac operating system was simply called Macintosh System Software, although it would later be referred to as Macintosh System Software 1 as newer versions were released. Many people have mistakenly claimed that this operating system was the first to feature a cursor with a graphical user interface, but that title belonged to the Apple Lisa. System 1 introduced many features that would remain in later iterations even to this day. Some of those included the Finder, a file manager responsible for launching applications and the overall user management of files, disks, and network volumes. The menu bar was also a new and revolutionary part of the operating system. Similar to the one found on the Lisa OS, the Macintosh menu menu bar had five basic headers when on the desktop, the Apple menu, file, edit, view, and special, although the menu bar options would change depending on the application in use. System 1 also featured seven desk accessories like the alarm clock, which could be used just like a real alarm. The computer would beep and the menu bar would flash when the alarm set time was reached. It could also be used as an easier way to set the time and date on the computer. Second was a basic 10-button calculator capable of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Third, a control panel could be used to adjust some of the computer's settings like volume, double-click speed, mouse sensitivity, and desktop background. On the Macintosh 128K, Macintosh 512K and the Macintosh Plus, the screen brightness was controlled by a mechanical adjustment wheel beneath the screen, not in the software control panel. What made the original control panel unique from later versions was the absence of any text. Apple did this to demonstrate the graphical user interface of the Macintosh. Fourth was keycaps, which was used to show the layout of the original Macintosh keyboard, although it didn't include keyboard shortcuts that could be achieved with modifier keys like Shift, Option, and Command. Fifth was a notepad that would save typed text onto the floppy disk, and multiple note pages could also be written. Sixth was a basic 15-piece slide puzzle, similar to the picture puzzles found in later versions of the Macintosh operating system. And finally, scrapbook, which was like a cut copy and paste library. You could store text selections and photos to transfer to other applications. Applications available for purchase on the Macintosh included Mac Paint, Mac Write, Mac Project, Mac Terminal, and Microsoft Word. A difference between desktop accessories and applications is that multiple desktop accessories could be run at once, but only one application could run at a time. This is due to the limited amount of RAM and the lack of an internal hard disk in the original Macintosh. Also, items in the trash were permanently deleted when the computer was shut down or a new application was loaded. System 1's total file size was about 216 kilobytes and contained six files. System, which included the desk accessories, finder, clipboard, an image writer printer driver, scrapbook, and notepad. A separate floppy disk included a guided tour of Macintosh, which contained tutorial demonstrations of the Macintosh system, as well as training programs for learning to use the mouse and the finder. Also included was a 33-minute audio cassette designed to run alongside the demonstrations as a complement to the floppy disk. Systems 2 through 4 added helpful features to the Macintosh, but none contained anything monumental. System 2 added support for Apple Talk, which allowed a local network of Macintosh computers to be connected without the need for a centralized router or server. System 2 also introduced support for the laser writer and added a hierarchical file system, which allowed file directories to be searched quickly regardless of size. System 3 was introduced with the Macintosh Plus, officially implementing HFS, 800K startup drives, and support for several new technologies including SCSI and Apple Share. System 3 also included Trash Bulging, where the trash icon would appear slightly bulged when files were added. System 4 was released with the Macintosh SE, and System 4.1 first shipped with the Macintosh 2. These new machines required software support for the first expansion slots, Apple Desktop Bus, internal hard drives, external color displays, and the first Motorola processor. As I said before, these operating system releases could only run one application at a time, except for desktop accessories, though special application shells such as Multimac or Switcher could work around this. 
Towards the end of 1987, Apple introduced a package titled Apple Macintosh System Software Update 5. For the first time, the Macintosh operating system was offered as a distinct retail product that included four 800K discs and three manuals at a cost of 49 US dollars. While the product box presented this update to the operating system as version 5, this number did not appear in the software itself. Three of the four discs, System Tools 1, System Tools 2, and Utilities 1, were all bootable, and the user could boot off of whichever floppy disk contained the tools the user needed. For example, System Tools 2 was the only disk with printer drivers, and Utilities 1 was the only disk with disk first aid and Apple hard drive setup. Because the disks were named System Tools, users and the press commonly referred to this version as System Tools 5. The main feature of System 5 was MultiFinder, an extension which let the system run several programs at once, but users could choose to disable MultiFinder and stick with running one app application at a time. Also included with System 5 for the first time was Installer, a tool that could be used to update a previous system folder to a new version. Because Installer typically targeted a floppy disk, the user needed to indicate which Macintosh the floppy would be used on, so that the correct control panels could be included. Installer could also be used to update printer drivers. System Software 5 was available for a very short time and only in a few countries, including the United States, Canada, and some European countries. System Software 6 was a consolidation release of the Macintosh system software, producing a complete, stable, and long-lasting operating system. One of the few features introduced in System 6 was a new utility called MacroMaker. It allowed users to record mouse and keyboard input as macros. MacroMaker had a unique user interface which aimed to look and act like a tape recorder. It was a great concept but left much to be desired. MacroMaker was criticized for its lack of features when compared to Microsoft's AutoMac 3, which was already available commercially. On May 13, 1991, System 7 was released. It was a major upgrade over System 6, adding a user interface overhaul, new applications, stability improvements, and many new features. The System 7 era saw numerous changes in the Macintosh platform, including a proliferation of Macintosh models. These changes, in addition to the internet becoming popular contributed to rising computer usage and networking. One of the most significant features of System 7 was virtual memory support, which previously had only been available as a third-party add-on. Accompanying this was a move to 32-bit memory, necessary for the ever-increasing amounts of RAM available. To ease the transition, the memory control panel contained a switch to disable the 32-bit feature, allowing for compatibility with older applications. Other notable System 7 additions were built-in cooperative multitasking and the ability to create aliases similar to shortcuts that were being introduced in later versions of Microsoft Windows. System extensions were enhanced by being moved to their own subfolder and in System 7.5, Apple included the Extensions Manager, a previously third-party program which simplified the process of enabling and disabling extensions. The Apple menu, previously limited to desk accessories in System 6, was made more general purpose. The user could now make frequently used folders and applications or any anything else they desired, appear in the menu by placing aliases to them in the Apple Menu Items subfolder. System 7 also introduced AppleScript, a scripting language for automating tasks, 32-bit QuickDraw, supporting so-called True Color Imaging, previously available as a system extension, and TrueType, an outline font standard. Trash under System 6 and earlier emptied itself automatically when shutting down a computer or when launching an application. But in System 7, Trash became a special hidden folder allowing files to remain main it across reboots until the user deliberately chose the empty trash command. Mac OS 8 was released on July 26, 1997, shortly after Steve Jobs returned to the company. It was mainly released to keep Mac OS moving forward during a difficult time for Apple. Initially planned as Mac OS 7.7, it was renumbered 8 to exploit a legal loophole and accomplish Jobs' goal of terminating third-party manufacturers licensed to System 7 and shutting down the Macintosh clone market. Mac OS 8 added a number of features from the abandoned Copeland project while leaving the underlying operating system unchanged. A multi-threaded finder was included so files could now be copied in the background. The graphical user interface was changed in appearance to a new shaded grayscale look called Platinum, and the ability to change the appearance themes, also known as skins, was added with a new control panel, though Platinum was the only theme shipped. Apple sold 1.2 million copies of Mac OS 8 in its first two weeks of availability and 3 million within six 
months. Because of Apple's financial difficulties at the time, there was a large grassroots movement among Mac users to upgrade and help save Apple. Even some pirate groups refused to redistribute the operating system. Mac OS Uh-oh.